today we're finishing looking at the normal distribution. Not to be confused with the paranormal distribution. That's quite clever. I like that. Anyhow. Um, I would love you, even though you've drawn many of them, under today's heading, please draw another normal distribution. Because what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you how to tackle some of these trickier questions that some of you asked me at the like midway or at the end of last lesson. Because I wasn't sure if you'd get up to it, and some of you did, but most of you didn't. So I sort of want to show you how they work. And you'll need a normal distribution on your page for me to explain. So, on this normal distribution, uh, the most important part of the graph is right there, smack bang, in the middle. Because we know, for the normal distribution, there are three measures of central tendency, and they're all the same value. Right? What are those three again? Mean, mode, and median. They're all right here on the center. So we'll just mark them all as the mean. And we know that the big concept behind the normal distribution is, if you know where the mean is, and then you know what the, or you calculate rather, the standard deviation of your set of scores, then as you go, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations away, you can have a very good sense of how much of the population you have within that range. Okay? So along with me, if you've got a few colors, it might be helpful. Let's draw in our one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm just going to put mine in roughly like this. Now what we've got here is, from the mean, I've color coded one, two, and three standard deviations away from the mean. So you might remember, you know, this is plus one standard deviation, and this is minus one standard deviation. Uh, going further, you've got plus two and minus two. And then lastly, as far out as we're willing to go, you've got plus three and minus three. Okay. Now, I want you to recall, uh, we said if you are within this certain range and you say one, two or three standard deviations, we've got all of these numbers for working out um, how much of the population is within certain boundaries. So for instance, in here, within one standard deviation of the mean, just by the shape of the graph you can see you've got a huge proportion of people in there. I'm just going to shade this a little bit. So something like this. So this orange portion of the graph in here, do you remember what the percentage was? 68%. Very 68% of the population, uh, well over half, almost, well, more than two thirds, is in that little band. Right? If we go out two standard deviations, if I go out this far, how much of the population do we get this time? 95, very good. So that 95, yeah, I'll come to that one. That 95 obviously includes the 68 we already measured. And then the last one that we go out, we go as far as you can. This is the 99.7, very good. Okay. So let's look at two different kinds of questions that uh, take these simple ideas and apply them in some slightly unusual ways. So I, I'm just going to finish out colouring a little bit here. Now I really hope, well I know for a fact actually, that some of you have encountered some of the questions that I'm about to show you on the board. If you're like, oh yeah, I remember this, I'm fine with this, you're more than welcome to continue on. But most of you, at least last time, hadn't gotten up to this point. So here's a question that they might pose to you. Um, here's, the, here's the actual wording. Um, what percentage of a population in a normal distribution, what percentage of the population, and then they'll provide you a range of Z scores. So we might say, for instance, what percentage of the population has a Z score between, say, negative one and two, question mark. Okay. So when you have a look at this, we know that standard, diff sorry, uh, standard scores, Z scores, are about how many of these you are away. So I want you to have a look at the graph, the distribution, and where these things belong. 
Okay, so negative one, do you see that this guy over here, right? All of these people on this line have a z-score of negative one. What about two? Here's two. Yeah, it's this green line over here, right? So the question is asking, how much of this population is in this boundary here? Does that make sense? Now, when you look at the picture, and the picture is so important. In fact, um, the first thing I would do when I get a paper which has uh, this in it and it's being assessed as a topic is that you see on the formative data sheet what all of these numbers are, right? But actually, it's the picture that will help you the most. So just like even if it's literally on your formative data sheet or somewhere at the front of the exam, just draw this thing. It has to be small just so you can get the picture. Can you see that obviously between negative one and two includes this whole orange section? Do you agree? Yeah. Like it's got at least 68% of it and then it's got a bit more. Okay, so my answer to this is going to be 68% plus whatever this little slice <coughs> here is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I've got orange plus half of the green. Okay. So then the question becomes, how do I work out how much is in that one little green area? Does anyone want to suggest how I might go about doing that? Ash, what do you think? Okay, fantastic. So do you remember what we were saying? Each of these as we go out further includes all the previous things in it, right? So in order to work out just this little sliver, I've got to say this entire green area and orange area is 95%, okay? So maybe what you want to put down is, you can add this onto a diagram if you want, that if you include both of the green, exclusively green areas, right? then there must be 95 take away 68. Do you agree with that? That's the part that I've taken out. Okay. So if that's 95 take away 68%, can someone tell me what that is? 27. 27? Very good. Okay. So therefore 27 includes both of these sides. So each one of these individually is going to be half of that, which looks to me like 13.5%. Does that make sense? So therefore, my answer to this question is going to be uh, percentage equals. So I'm going to, first I'm going to say the 68. That's the orange bit. Oops, there we go. And then I'm going to add on the 13.5, which is half of this. Does that make sense? Do you see where I got it from? Okay. So you can say, well, what is that? Uh, 80, 81? Point five. Is that right? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so that's not too difficult. All right, but you can ask for any range of different Z scores, and you can work out in exactly the same way we did with a bit of subtraction. Sometimes you have to halve things. You can work out any percentage of the population that is within a certain range. So for yeah, sorry. Correct. So what I've got is if this is one standard deviation away and this is two. That going in both directions, that push outwards, is 27%. That's the difference between those two things, right? But if I only want one half of it, that's why I divide this by two to get that. Does that make sense? Correct, that's right. Uh, I mean, there's no reason why you can't keep on going more and more standard deviations away, but if you think about it, these people on these ends, like even further than three, they are so exceptional that they happen so rarely, we don't really have any reliable information about them. What we do have reliable information about is right here in the middle. Does that make sense?